Oh, hi. Thanks for tuning in. This is Manuel Mütki, aka MNL 1337 for blabsuspot.com. And today you see the second part of my poker career. But before we start the video, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Let's go. So in this video, you see my breakthrough in 2012 how I climbed the high stakes and crushed them for several years. And also there will be again some poker tips, but this time from fellow poker pros, uh, not for me. Exclusively for Bluff the Spot. Tip number four. Hi, my name is Jamila van Perga and I'm a professional poker pro from Germany. And my tip is to not give up too quickly. Um, you know, when you start a professional career, there are so many mistakes which can happen, especially in the beginning. Um, and this is just normal and you have to realize this. And you're under so much more pressure than usual, usually. And uh, especially when you have a downswing right in the beginning. I just can tell you, please just don't give up too quickly. I mean, if you're prepared well, you can do this. So 2012 was my breakthrough year in poker when you consider where I started and where I ended the year. I started the year playing uh, NL200 and NL400. I already took some shots at higher games, but it did not go so well. I already started playing live games in 2011. I think in October was the first EPT I played. It was in Berlin and I played uh, some 10, 20 there also. But in 2012, I played more and more live games. In April, there was a 3,500 uh, tournament, a WPT tournament. And I got eight plays on this uh, for, yeah, it was like 25K euro or something like this. Uh, this was half, uh, partly staked, but was still a very big cash. So one month later, I played some 500 tournaments and had a very good uh, winning streak. I got uh, three times first in some tournaments and I got one fourth place. So in total, this was just under 100k in caches for this year. So because I was running so good, um, I decided to go to Vegas and play there some cash game and tournament. Um, the tournaments went not so well. I think I played like 10 tournaments, but did not cash any tournament, including the main event. I also was staked for these tournaments, so it was not so much money I lost there. But the cash games uh, went very well. Um, it went actually so well that I extended my stay for one or two weeks and just for the one or two weeks I extended the stay, I won a $20,000. Uh, and before I was also running very good, so in total I won 40000 in the cash games there. After I went home from Vegas, I started to play uh, online again and also took some aggressively shots again because my bankroll was uh, yeah, quite increased, I would say. Uh, I think it was doubled. Yeah about double at this time. So I also played the uh, NL600, NL1K and so on, and was also running very good. So after Vegas, I also managed to win 80,000 uh, in the online cash games. So not very long after that, of course, I um, tried to shot some 1020 and 25 uh, cash games because the bankroll was just increased so fast that uh, I was rolled enough to also play these games, take some aggressive shots. Yeah, and I managed to stay at these games from there on. So that was the year.
Tip number five. Hey, my name is Andreas Frilly, and my tip for you is to develop a professional thought process in poker, and that is always including some degree of uncertainty. If you listen to a recreational poker player in the casino, that player will tell you with 100% certainty that he knows how to play the hand. But if you listen to a high stakes professional, he will always or mostly having at least some uncertainty about whether the play is correct or not. So what direction do you want to go? Two thousand thirteen to two thousand fifteen was the peak of my poker career. I was playing more and more live cash game and also tournaments, and I started to play less and less online. Basically, every year I played less hands than the previous year since starting since two thousand eleven, I think. So I also started to play a lot of EPTs, and I was in Las Vegas every year since two thousand twelve, and I was every year playing the WSOP main event. The three years went very well. Every year I won five figures online in, in the online cash games and th six figures in the live cash game. Also in 2013, I got second place at the WSOP tournament for 300k. And I was also shotting 5100. In 2015, I was shotting 100, 200 and 200, 400, even though the 200, 400 game I was staked. But all in all, it was very, three very successful years. Tip number six. That's a Chinese hand sign for six. My name is Mr. Dorsen. Um, my actual name is Nojan Dorsen. But anyway, um, I'm born and raised in Germany. And one day I just decided that I want to give up everything I have in Germany and move to Las Vegas. By giving up everything, it, it cost me a lot of money. So I didn't have much left. The only money I had with me when I moved to Las Vegas was $3,000. That's all I had. And um, yeah, that didn't really go well because I uh, lost most of it uh, within the first two months. Um, I was down to $170 very, very fast. Uh, living expenses, um, food, Uber, whatever, downswing. So I was down to $170. Luckily for me, there was a um, promotion at Mandalay Bay during that time. Um, they would give out 1500 every week. Wh whoever had the most hours at Mandalay Bay, who, that, that guy would get um, $1,500. So I sat down with my last $170. I uh, played 48 hours straight, went home, took a shower, came back, played 48 hours again. And um, I made $2,500 uh, at the table that week. And um, I won the 1500 So. I was basically that saved me. So the point is if you want to become a professional poker player or if your goal is to to be a full-time poker player like quit your job and poker only then I recommend to save up money first um, take care of your living expenses first uh, like rent and whatever money you need for food every month um, and uh, make sure that you have at least like at least 20 buy-ins, uh, then you're good. I mean, the more buy-ins you have, uh, the better it is, but um, you should have at least 20 buy-ins. And um, this way, it's there's not too much pressure on you. Like whenever you go play poker, it could affect your game. Um, even if it doesn't affect your game, then if you have a losing session and you go home, you will be sad, kind of depressed. Um, it doesn't help you at all, um, so taking care of your finances first will help you a lot. Good luck. Since 2016, my poker career was declining a lot. 
I was not doing any theory anymore since I reached the high stacks and clearly the opponents got better and there was less and less fish. So the result is my results were very bad. I did lose uh, 22k in the online cash games and also the live games uh, were not running really well. The last two EPTs I played I was break even and the other one I was losing a little bit or I mean it was also 20k I think. When before I always uh, won quite a decent amount of money in the EPTs on every single one. Yeah, is he broke? He's not beating any games anymore. He's retired, right? The only thing that was still running good were the Vegas cash game, even though the profits were not as much as the years before. I think I was still winning there because of my um, professional attitude, my experience and because I had a different playing style. But maybe more on this at another video. Maybe, I don't know. If you like the tips from my poker friends, you can check out their channels in the description below. That's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. And next video is coming in about two weeks. It's about the difference between online poker and live poker. See you then.